What's up, guys? My name is Joshua Lopez. I'm here today with my friend, Bert Cantu. We are introducing a new series of videos that I'm calling... Pretty much, what I'm gonna be doing is bringing in some of my local friends to come in and try out some of the gear that they send me at Widowmaker Studios to demo out and pretty much we're gonna test tone and talk shop. So Bert, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us about what you do. Uh, my name is Bert Cantu. I play uh, with a couple of local bands over the last couple of years. Recently I've been doing a punk band called uh, Noble Insect. I also am with a uh, Slipknot tribute band called uh, Prosthetics. <laughs> Prosthetics. Today's piece of gear, I'm looking at the Joyo Bantap Midi Ore. <laughs> and um, this thing is basically, it says it's modeled off of Jim Root's tone, so I'm assuming the Tiny Terror, the Terror. So this is a micro amp. If you're not familiar, I did a whole demo overview of this amp. Go check that video out in the link below. Since it's a small amp, I'm guessing it's modeling the Tiny Terror. Yeah. The Jim Root Tiny Terror. And since he plays in a Slipknot tribute band, and these guys go all out. Like, they all dress up. Like, by their second gig, these guys were already making figures. Yeah. Straight up. Because you guys did it the right way, you know? Appreciate Everybody it. put in, like, so much hard work. I'll put some video, <laughs> you know, linkage somewhere around here. But they put so much hard work into the whole thing of it, and it just came out really good. The energy that you guys bring in is amazing. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, like with the prosthetics thing, everybody in the band is giving, you know, 110, 120%. So yeah. when you have everybody that's working towards one goal of basically trying to get the people that never got the chance to catch Slipknot when they first came out, the 99, 98, 2000s, that's what we're trying to focus on. I mean, we do play a, a lot of the later material, but we are trying to stick to with the original nine. Yeah. So nothing after uh, all. <laughs> I mean, I know gone. you guys have like slipped one or two in yeah. there, probably, but not anything like the new, new, new. Yeah. Know, slip nine. No. Yeah. We're, we're trying to keep with the with the original nine guys, I guess. Whoa! <laughs> it's a fly. <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> so yeah. So since this is, you know, when they sent it to me. I started jamming on it and I was like, wow, this really actually nails modern British oh, yeah. uh, a crunch very well for being such like, a, you know, it's a $150 piece of equipment, so it's pretty inexpensive with Bluetooth capabilities. <laughs> but um, when I when when I got it in, I, I immediately sent you a video <laughs> yeah. and I was like, dude, it would be so funny if you guys just traveled with these. It would be Because it's also got like a headphones out that has a cab sim. Yeah. So as soon as you headphones out, you're already cap. You already have a cab sim. That's perfect. So I was like, you could like plug it into an amp and the headphones out. It's, it's great. And you know, since you guys already have so much gear, yeah. I was like, this would be great. <laughs> but today, uh, Bert's coming in. He's gonna try this out. We're running the Joyo Band Tamp. Um, we have a Phaser, an Ibanez PT9. This is actually one of my personal pedals. And when he came, he's been a fan of it. So he was like, can we? Check this pedal out, and you were saying that uh, Jim was using it? Yeah, I believe that Jim Root, uh, up until I think a few tours ago, I think he did have one of these in his actual rack. So. Yeah, and I, I got one, super lucked out. My uncle works at a pawn shop, and every time something that looks like it'll be worth something he hits me up, and I got it for a steal of 30 bucks. Uh, <laughs> Might have been the max on one. <laughs> Don't hate me if, if I'm wrong. <laughs> but, um, we're running through the phaser, we have the Joya, we have a couple, uh, three of my favorite overdrive pedals. I have the Decimate G for noise gating, because yeah. you gotta have that with all this stuff going oh, yeah. on. We're running through a seismic with veteran 30s. I wanted to do something different than the vintage yeah. 30s on the orange I used last time. And I'm using a Unidyne 57 to have a different flavor on the 57. And um, why don't you grab that guitar? Well, all right, Josh. <laughs> so this is a Fender Strat. Yeah. Um, equipped with what? Okay, so 
This is actually um, a Mexican, a made in Mexico. The Silver Burst one, uh, I don't remember exactly what year it was, but it did come with a, uh, a rosewood neck, 22. I actually bought this other made in Mexico neck because of the 70s headstock, mm. which is, of yeah, course, yeah. the headstock. Yeah, because it's, it's a lot thicker yeah. than the thin fender. I have a, an affinity, yeah. and it's got this headstock, and I, I just love that. Fan. You know, and I'm, I've never been a fan of Fenders, like the Fender Stratocaster. Uh, a, a lot of my heroes obviously use them. I was never a fan of the actual shape or, you know, the Super Strat type thing. But of course, to do the whole prosthetics thing, trying to do play the gym root part, wanted to play it in 70s headstock, that's the nice. way to go, right? yeah, yeah. Um, and the pickups? Yeah, actually, so these I just got recently, and these are the actual gym root demon, demoninium, mm. demons. Nice, nice. So, so like we have, you know, pretty much a nice representation of what would be gym root stone. Yeah. Cool. So let's uh, let's start. We're just gonna start turning some knobs before we introduce an overdrive in. So yeah. let's start riffing. <laughs> Like, like it can do the clean thing, yeah, but you yeah. can also like, I notice sometimes when you have uh, run a game overly hot, it just turns into mush. mush. Yeah. It's kind of still, it just kind of makes it more aggressive. No, in a yeah. sense, instead of like mushing it up. No, and I, I do like how it's like, it's exactly like you're saying, like, so we have the gain at well, almost. Well, like we were doing it here and it yeah. still sounded great, but I was like, what if we just go a little higher and it was still like. No. It's not flubbing out at all. No, yeah. So I'm gonna take this back uh -huh. and let's introduce the Maxon. Yeah. I mean, it, the Maxon is classic, but it's still too flubby for my tasting. You know, like it's got hair. It's got yeah. hair, but it doesn't have like what these pedals are about to do. Okay. You know what I mean? Let's. Okay, we're gonna try the Aries FX Savage Drive. It's pretty big on the market. Yeah. So that's a great overdrive. Now yeah. I'm gonna show you guys my favorite overdrive right now. This is the High Wind Amplification Dire Wolf. It's got a boost in it, it's got a bunch of tone shaping options, but my favorite thing about it is the blend knob. And I don't think you've ever experienced a blend knob before, no. right? Happy Halloween, we got a first timer out here. So this is great. What I like about this is we're gonna take it like a super over the, the top, okay. and then we're gonna use the blend knob to like introduce that back in. Right? That's pretty good. You see how like when you put the tone is halfway. Yeah. But like it just does so much to it. Yeah. 
Let's introduce the phaser. Yeah. What does that do? Uh, so actually in the phaser, uh, one of the reasons that I use it is for one of the other songs, well, people equal Dookie. <laughs> um, he has that. That's awesome. <laughs> I really like that. That sounds, I love how phasers, like they kind of sound like a wah. Yeah. When you're, like if you have them on slow, slow speed. I mean, you actually have it kind of fast. So yeah, and, and actually, so really with, with the prosthetics thing, the phaser and my wah pedal are the only ones, the only really effects that I use. And this one, I'll pepper it in, you know, uh, j because uh, one of leads their- Leads too, you throw on leads? Yeah, a little bit. I, for the leads, I, I usually do have like a, a separate uh, switcher that I use with the, uh, the HX effects unit. Um, nice. So it changes the channel on my amp. It adds uh, a little bit of a volume boost. I have an EQ on it to where it kind of changes, even though I do change. Yeah, because you channel. want a lead to come like. Yeah, yeah, up exactly. Front. And then it has a, a like a it has a delay in the loop, and then I have I guess two lead patches. One of them has this one in front of the amp, and one of them doesn't. Okay, nice. And I like how you can go and put like different effects in the loop or not it, in before the amp with I, the HX sump. It's perfect, like that. For those of you guys yeah. who buy like tube amps, because we want gain. Yeah. It's you know totally acceptable to use even overdrives if you would like to, but you know, delays, reverbs, effects like that. Yeah. Digital, I don't think there's, you know, it's not gonna be like vast differences no. like gain does, you yeah. know, the way gain reacts. So, so you can use something like the HX Stomp to like run an overdrive pedal, everything that isn't the tube amp, but everything you still need after buying a tube amp. Yeah, no, Cause you don't wanna get into perfect. this. You don't wanna start this, you yeah. know, it'll never end. <laughs> It'll never end. And that's why we're tone tasty. Tone tasty. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so, um, so with the phaser, like there, there's that little part, uh, of course, with uh, that, one of their main popular songs, like from their first album was that Wait and Bleed song. Yeah. So th there was the original one where there was like the super aggressive vocals and then they redid it because. Like I, in a cleaner I, setting, right? Yeah, like and, uh, more studio quality? Yeah, n well, not only that, but I think he actually did like cleaner vocals for the choruses. Mm. And I think they did it for like a movie that was coming out, like they wanted to put it on the soundtrack. Or maybe they just wanted it to be, I guess, more mainstream, I guess. Yeah, probably, prob because that song yeah. did pretty mainstream for them, I mean. And, and <laughs> while that's actually not Jim Root, that's uh, uh, Josh Brainerd that was on the actual recordings of it. But that, that song, what I play as the Jim Root part. <laughs> So when I, like I put that. the phaser on it, so that's if that's a four-minute song, that's like two and a half minutes, almost I'll just three minutes. That. I'm just doing that. <laughs> so to kind of I guess stand out a little bit, I like throwing the phaser on it. So how'd you like this app? I, for me personally, I think that this would be perfect for a, um, for like the smaller gigs or maybe practice, you know. or, or pr practicing absolutely. Uh, I can definitely utilize this as maybe, well, most of our stuff is going to be like, not necessarily fly-in shows, but... Um, you travel. Yeah, uh, but you guys, Widowmaker Studios, we are in deep South Texas. Super deep. We're f like yeah. 10, 15 minutes away from the Mexico border. Yeah. You used to be able to go get tacos for lunch. Yeah, uh, well, you still can. You just got to be more careful. <laughs> I don't know if you saw in the clips, you know, beforehand, we're running, you know, two auxiliary, you know, percussion setups. Yeah. Our drummer is trying to be as true to, you know, the first, Super. second album as possible. Super. Richard Ferguson is a beast yeah no that's my buddy rich right there and uh no yeah so i mean so we're, we're going with a lot of stuff and then, of course i got a half stack the, uh you know izzy also has a half stack yeah. as well it's kind of one of those things where like I, I was i was a little worried obviously coming over here playing this you know with your setup, of course, this is my guitar. Yeah. But this setup is not gonna be the same as, you know, the sound. Yeah, definitely not. I notice, and one thing to note, yeah. is the Fishmans, because they're so tight already, yeah. like you don't always need an overdrive, my video sounds awesome with just using this. Yeah. But I get the EMGs in here, and I personally automatically want to slap an overdrive. Which yeah. is why I grabbed three of them to play with. No, yeah, and, and honestly, like, I think, 
it's like you said, like this, this high wind here, I do kind of want to mess with one of these because this one, especially with all these different little features. Yeah, here, you could really, they're, they're, you know, depending on your style, it's got like, you can make it tighter yeah. or looser or more aggressive or less aggressive. Like if people thump or, you know, yeah. like whatever, like I've done a lot with that one pedal that it's become my favorite pedal. Yeah, no, and I honestly think if I were to get one, it would definitely be one of mine. And well, and did like, it make you believe it? <laughs> I think it kind of did. Honestly. I mean, if you can take that pedal and take a, a you know an inexpensive amp and yeah. make some, like you know, I can probably use this as a rig and get some really good album. Yes, yeah. to and, be honest. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm not necessarily a skeptic, but the amps that I have at home, or you know, this guy uses top notch gear all the yeah. time. Yeah. So I was not necessarily like I said a skeptic. But I was definitely interested on in coming and trying out this Joyo. And I do want to pick one up. Reason is, like I mentioned, for the out-of-town shows where we can save a lot of space and wait on the vehicles. Yeah. If uh, we, we are planning on doing some fly, fly-in when shows. When you have so. a practice, I want you to take this and I want you to tell me if it gets loud enough. Yeah, no, and that, I'm wondering, and I don't really can't. I'm not practicing right now, so yeah. I can't, you know, try it out. You, you practice down the street. So. Yeah, exactly. No, so, but yeah. yeah, and I mean, can I hear the uh, the clean tone real quick? Yeah, let's hear that. Turn that off. Like, you mean, like, when you're playing Slipknot, yeah. like, how clean do you need it? Exactly. Yeah. And, and honestly, that one part is the only clean part that we have in the set. And, I mean... That one, yeah. yeah, yeah, it does the job. Yeah. So they have some other ones that, um, like, they're, like, 20 30 $40 more, but they have uh, two channel or two... They come with a pedal, yeah. and they have two sets of gain have of you, tone. Have you tried the zombie? It's on the next list. Yeah? In fact, like, I'm supposed to be getting my next product in, but... I'm waiting for the zombie because it's like almost there. Oh, okay. But if not, I'm gonna do like the same like two channel one, but the JCM. Zombie two now. Right? That's the one, yeah, that I'm gonna oh. do the zombie two. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna come back. For yeah, that. for that one. <laughs> Thank you, Bert. Absolutely. For coming in, everybody. Bert's been, Bert's awesome. Go check out his band, Noble Insect, which is really freaking great, and Prosthetics. Maybe you'll see them sometime in a city near you when we're all gigging again, hopefully in 2021. Yeah, hopefully soon. <laughs> Thank you all for tuning into this video. Hope you guys enjoyed this first episode of Tone Tasting. I'm gonna have some more videos, some more demos, and of course, I'm gonna have another episode of this for you guys. Let me know how you like this video. I wanna see who's making it to the end. Leave a comment below that you made it all the way to the end. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and the little bell button and we'll catch you guys next time.